So I've been looking through a lot of old photos um, for the last six years or so, just since graduating college. And man, it looks like such an epic time because it has been. Just looking at the photos, or if I just told you what I've done you know, throughout my 20s, you would never know that I've been dealing with chronic back pain this entire time. It's gone through waves um, since I was 21. I'm 28 now. You know, waves of intensity and um, the ways I've dealt with it, but another day has gone by where I've not been thinking about my back pain. And it has been the greatest challenge of my life and the greatest teacher of my life. And in the last two weeks, everything has changed. I have switched from treating it from strictly a physical sense to realizing that it is an emotional, uh, it's an emotional problem. It's, it's an emotional journey that needs to be had. And I would have never known that. I would have not embarked on this emotional odyssey to really uncover what's going on beneath the hood if I didn't break down and get to my lowest point. And I've just been thinking about this past year. Um, birthday in three months, so the year's not over, but man, 28 has been the most incredible and the hardest year of my life. I've had incredible relationships. I, you know, I was in the thick of living in Osaka, um, moved to Tokyo. A lot of epic stuff has happened, but also things where that tore me up emotionally, with relationships, and the last month when I was moving to Tokyo, so that it's been a month now. So the, the month leading up to that and the first few weeks here was an incredibly hard month. Um, I back, I had three flare ups, which is like, when it just feels like I, I said before the best way I could describe a flare up was it was like a dam in my back, in my low back that was just holding in water. And that water was pain. And I would do something, usually I'm working out, but one of the times is just brushing my teeth. And the dam would break and just pain. <laughs> and it would envelop my back, it would spread different parts of my body. I was just out. And I would go down the emotional spiral. And it was really hard. And uh, man, I mean, that's happened countless times throughout the years, but it happened three times in that last month and that was my rock bottom it was the universe saying you cannot deal with this anymore the way that you've been dealing with it which is physical something in your life has to change not just a little bit but you have to make a drastic change and the the concept that i want to talk about today is sometimes life presents us with very difficult circumstances and we don't know why we can't explain it we ask how why did this happen to me doing everything right you know maybe not but i'm doing the best i can like how has this happened to me that setback what seems like a setback if we see it as such is really a setup to get to where we're ultimately supposed to go in life get into that low point is the fuel we need to drastically change our life because it's so easy to live in this chasm of comfort. You know, it's not too bad. Maybe life isn't too terrible. Like you have a job that pays the bills. You're reasonably good at it. You can get through it. You enjoy it. You're excited to get to the weekend. That's fun. Monday comes around. You have anxiety. You're not loving it again. And it's not bad enough where you could stick through it. Same thing with the relationship. It's good enough. You have somebody to hold, you know, you, uh, you like each other, you fight, but is what it is. Don't all couples fight? It's not rock bottom. And sometimes that's the cavern of comfort. Cavern? Chasm of comfort. <laughs> the cave of comfort. Where it would be better for something disastrous, something really bad to happen. Because then that is the impetus to actually make lasting and real change. And this was it for me. As I said, I was looking through photos and... It looks like everything's been great because it has been in so many ways. But I've just been getting by 
I've just been living in this state of pain that fluctuates between a two and a nine, you know, on any day of the week. Um, a 10 is I'm just bedridden for a couple of days, just not, you know, I'm just in despair. And that's back pain. And, and that's so what so many people deal with. They're just living in this state of this is fucking shitty, but what am I supposed to do? Because there's no... There's no answer to back pain. It's absolutely ridiculous to handle it. This thing that afflicts so many people, yet there's no, well, there's no answers because what I'm realizing is it's not physical, you know? <laughs> there's no answers because there's nothing structurally wrong with the body. That's why it's so perplexing and why these last six years have been so confusing and it's been like, I've just been wandering around the medical field trying to figure out what the hell is going on with my back because you know if you have back pain you know the the gamut of going to orth, uh orthopedics chiropractors i almost said orth orthodontist and maybe you try that too uh chiropractors acupuncture you know physical therapy i did rolfing which is like intense deep tissue uh, body work, <laughs> obviously, Jack. Like general practitioners, you go everywhere, and no one could explain this like mysterious back pain. And MRIs, maybe they do show a couple bulging discs, like I do have. Um, I have a bulging disc in my L5 S1 and bone fissure, which is not much. Like that is natural. Dr. John Sarno, who's the pioneer in everything I'm learning about, which is treating the physical symptoms as psychological, says that those are just like gray hairs of the spine. And 50% of people around at the age of 30 who don't have pain have a herniated disc and it shouldn't cause debilitating back pain. Take that, so there's the diagnosis, which doesn't really make sense. The fact that it spreads, it moves, it's always in different places. My hands a lot here. It moves around the body. Like for me, sometimes it's in my mid right back. Sometimes it's in the front of my hips. Sometimes it's in what I thought was the SI joint, which is the joint that connects the sacrum and the spine. It's always in a different place. Sometimes it's left. Sometimes I've had flare ups in my mid back. It's because it's not physical. There's structurally nothing wrong with me. Um, and most people who deal with chronic pain, but what I'm learning and the whole crux of the story here is, so this guy, Dr. John Sarno, um, pretty much opened the door of this, the mind body syndrome. And he's a legend. He's a pioneer. He saved thousands of people, but it's still a esoteric, you know, world of medical field because most people want to believe that it's physical and I did too. The last six years I did too. And that's why it took me hitting rock bottom. But the theory is that the brain creates physical body, physical pain in your body <laughs> because it's distracting you from emotional pain that lives in the unconscious. And the physical pain um, is a distraction because that emotional pain, be it anger, sadness, grief, sorrow, depression, that would be too painful if it did rise to the surface and the brain is trying to protect us. So the brain is our friend. What I'm doing now is reprogramming my brain to realize I don't need the protection anymore. I can handle whatever emotions are trying to come up. I need to handle them. And I'm going to therapy now to work on those emotions I'm doing throughout the day, um, many different multifaceted approach to, to handling all this on a psychological level. But the point of the story is that if it were not for that, that those three flips in that month, I would not be at my rock bottom. And I reached out and I somehow to the gate grace of God found somebody who realized that this was an emotional thing. And it's like, you got to handle this emotionally. And um, they healed that way. The same thing happened. They're at rock bottom. Because most people don't want to accept 
that this is emotional. And I was just, I just texted my buddy Seth, uh, Greg Sev talked to you yesterday, and um, I was like, dude, like remember you sent me the thing Tim Ferriss like a couple months ago that he was having bad back pain. You know he's going through a tough time with the, with his girlfriend did ayahuasca and like the back pain went away and at the time i didn't want to really believe it or buy into it because i'm like um i wanted to treat it and as a strictly physical thing and the program i was doing at the time was physical so it kind of discredited what i was doing to see that it was indeed emotional because when you do ayahuasca you go deep and it brings up a lot of emotions and i've not done it and I'm not saying you have to do it like by no means, but it's definitely intriguing to me now. Like I wanted to wait till I really have a reason to do it instead of just doing it to do it. And now I'm like, I know there's, there's some shit that would come up and I think it could actually help me. That's besides the point. <laughs> so we want to believe these things are, are, are physical because that's just an easier explanation. You know, if I do this, if I treat this physically, if I get this strong enough, but like, it doesn't make sense. And we got to think logically. This mysterious syndrome, sickness, uh, pain, it doesn't, the body's not just this thing that structurally, if there's nothing there, that should just be causing random pain all over, like, we're stronger than that. The body's resilient and the brain is really the captain of the ship. And that is what is, is causing these problems. And this quote of this guy I've been uh, following, Pain PT on YouTube, which he's all about just the um, psychological approach to healing chronic pain. He says, if you're treating the body, you're treating the symptom. If you're treating the mind, you're treating the cause. The mind is, you know, it's the the heart well it's not the heart the heart is the heart mind is the commander of this ship it is it can do whatever it wants in the body and um without getting to the bottom of what's going on in the mind these problems are not going to go away and your back pain could heal but there's always gonna be something going on unless you really understand what's happening and strive to get to the bottom of it so took getting to that low point for me to say, okay, something has to change or something has to happen now because I cannot live my life like this anymore. The universe is telling me you need to handle this. This is it's not acceptable, you know? And I finally was able to be like, okay, it did take somebody else kind of guiding me and being like, and seeing proof that they healed um, through the psychological approach for me to truly see it. And now I can't unsee it. I know there's, there's so much just in the past two weeks, there's so much that's come up of pain from my childhood and trauma and stuff that I have definitely not worked through. And I'm just grateful to have embarked on this journey. I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm still getting the pain signals, this, uh, brain sensations but I'm not scared of it that's the biggest thing scare or fear is the the killer in this situation I'm facing it I ran at the gym today which I haven't done in a year but that was the second time I've done it in a couple of weeks man it felt so good like you know I have the symptoms right now a little bit but I'm not gonna let the brain run the show anymore I'm calling the shots and we have to literally do that we have to tell our brain I'm not going to take it anymore I know what you're trying to do you're trying to protect me but it's unnecessary I don't need it anymore and it takes months could take a very could take a long time of constant diligence and persistence and full acceptance that this is the cause and full embrace i'm embracing it with everything i got and it is empowering and the stars are aligning in such incredible ways it's it's unbelievable and 
where I wanted to go with this is maybe we need to hit rock bottom to make serious changes in our lives. And I would not change the last six years for anything. They have brought so much light, so much love, so much joy into my life. Even the pain, especially the pain. It has made my life so meaningful. And dealing with this will forever weave the tapestry of my being. It's, this is who I am. I'm somebody who dealt with this and I kept my faith and I got through it. And it caused me at the end, after I tried what seemed like everything, to finally put my guard down and start digging within. And it's been the most enriching experience that I could ever hope for. And I'm just glad it's happened this young, this early in my life, 28. And most people never do this work. I'm truly getting to know themselves because it is scary. There's a lot there that's very uncomfortable and it is not always fun. Digging into your past, digging into your childhood, asking yourself, what am I truly angry about? what caused these emotions and working through them, journaling every day, meditating. And if you are dealing with something that's, it's bad, but maybe it's not rock bottom yet. You gotta ask yourself, how long am I gonna be comfortable in this situation? How long am I gonna be comfortable in this discomfort? And in a sense, that's what I was in the last six years. I was comfortable giving it 80%. I mean, I was doing everything I felt like I could. Doing all these workouts, training, trying to eat right, just, you know, asking questions. But it's so, there's so much noise out there as far as how to heal. It felt like I tried everything that I could do in the exterior world. Everything that could fix me when I'm the only one who could fix myself. And that comes with from within. This is the only place, you know, I scratched the surface. This has brought, this has brought me to my lowest lows and that's caused me to do a lot of introspection and deep work, but I am ripping open the door, my heart and soul, and I'm diving in. And I'm tearing up, tears are falling literally every day either through meditating or journaling or just like when I get inspired and just so grateful for what I'm doing and what I've gotten through it makes me very emotional. And I know that there's so much that needs to come out and anything we could do to get, get that out of us is so worthwhile. And me hitting that low, that rock bottom it's a necessary wound this whole journey has been a necessary wound in my life because it's all culminating in this moment saying Vinny you're 28 you've not dealt with these things from your childhood it seems like you, you could continue on like this and you probably could but there's a lot that you got to work through to truly step through that threshold and become who you're meant to be because you're not meant to be in this debilitating state in fear of the next flare up questioning if you could go for your dreams because you know you you can't travel with a bad back and now we got to make serious changes in our lives and this is what i'm doing now cutting out the bs the distractions focusing on this moment cherishing it it's not that it's just like i'm grueling it out and just like you know punishing myself like this is like i'm cherishing this every day i'm grateful just to be on this journey reading and learning about these things that fascinate me going deep connecting with people i haven't connected to in a long time you know connecting with friends and family it is very worth cherishing and i assure you if you decide to do this work, you'll be
what we receive from it is just beyond what we could possibly comprehend. It's a gift that's going to give for the rest of our lives to truly know ourselves as hard as it, as it is. It's the moment where everything changes. And this book, Under Saturn's Shadow by James Hollis, man, so good. The Wounding and Healing of Men. It's the first book that I finished on this kind of odyssey. And he says, There are wounds that crush the soul, distort and misdirect the energy of life, and those that prompt us to grow up. It was time I grew up. It was time for me to grow up. And that was the universe saying, bah, bah, bah. Here you go. Let's do this and do it now. Yet, even when we're hit with those, those lows, it's up to us to actually do something about it. And what do we do with those, with those wounds? Many of us, unfortunately, use our pain to bring pain upon the world. I think Alex Ramosi, he says, pain is inescapable in life. And what differentiates the heroes from the villains is that the hero says, I felt pain and I don't want the world to feel pain. The villain says, I felt pain. I'm going to make the world feel it like I did. Something along those lines. The greatest stories in history, the people who changed the world, they've gone through real shit. They've gone through pain. On the hero's journey, they've gone through the cave, darkness, and then they come out and they share with the world what they've learned. They share the gift that people need. And man, it's fit. these last six years have been traversing through the shadow of the Valley of Death. <laughs> Bit dramatic, but it's the it's the wounding, you know, the the years of just difficulty. The fire and flames, the phoenix shall be reborn. And uh we all go through these things, whether we know it or not. And you now the point is that we're all wounded. Like you can't get through childhood without some baggage, some shit that happens, but maybe it takes getting to that rock bottom to realize I need to make some changes. I got to figure out what happened and to truly move on and be everything I'm meant to be. I got to work through it. The setback, what we think is a setback. It's not a setback, whatever you're going through, however hard it is, it is a set up. If we see it as such. And uh, James Hollis says. The Saturnian rack turns. Every man is on it. Their wounds do not quicken consciousness or bring wisdom. They merely cause pain without meaning. The anesthetic of work. The numbing of narcotics. Be the chemical or ideological. The terror of loneliness. All wounds without transformation. Such wounds are barbarous. Soulless. For men to begin the process of healing, they must first risk being honest with themselves, allowing the feelings they think they can't afford. They must admit they are not happy in spite of what they have achieved. They must admit they do not know who they are and what they must do to save themselves, or what they must do to save themselves. They must overcome the fear that blocks such thinking, the fear that they will have no, they have to change their lives if the emotional cat is let out of the bag. First step towards healing is the hardest. Men must stop lying to themselves. And by extension, each other. They must permit their unhappiness to become conscious. They must admit that, perhaps for all the best intentions, their lives are wrong. And that from this point on, it is their responsibility to change. That's what I was trying to get to. We could just continue on as if things... You know, what is it? Things are the way they are. They're not supposed to be great. We numb ourselves. We distract ourselves. Instead of going in, instead of looking at ourselves, truly. Are you happy with the way things are? I know I was not. As much as it seemed like I was on the surface, as much 
you know, as those times were incredible, I was not happy and I couldn't figure out what to do. And it tore me up. And now I know, no matter how long it takes to know myself, that's how long it's going to take to heal. Do we use our wounds to hide, to be more angry, to be resentful? Or do we use them to change and become all we're meant to be? The choice is yours. The change, I think it's got to be drastic. To get to where you're ultimately meant to go, you must do things most people will not do. It takes courage. You got what it takes. It is the greatest adventure we can ever hope to embark on in life. It is to finally know ourselves. Much, much love.